Hello everyone. Let's talk about solid sequencing. Solid stands for supported oligonucleotide ligation and detection. In this method, the DNA sample which is to be sequenced is first amplified using emulsion PCR. The bead of emulsion PCR that has our amplicon is then used for solid sequencing. The solid DNA sequencing method uses short 8 mer sequences that is allowed to form base pairing with the template DNA. This is not an ordinary 8 mer sequence. It consists of two specific bases and six degenerate bases. The degenerate bases means it can bind any nucleotide on the template DNA. Whereas the two specific bases will bind with the template DNA only if there is a specific base pairing with the corresponding nucleotide. This 8 mer sequence is further attached with fluorescence probe. The color of fluorescent probe is selected in the following manner. If the first base is A and the second base is A, then the fluorescent probe used is blue. If the first base is A and the second base is C, then the fluorescent probe used is green. If it is AG, then it is yellow. And if it is AT, then it is red. Now, in a similar way, we have color of fluorescent probe for other nucleotide combination. Notice this carefully. We have four fluorescent color probe for 16 possible combinations of nucleotides. During the experiment, if blue fluorescence is detected, this means the base pair nucleotide can either be AA, CC, GG or PP. If the fluorescent signal is red, then the base pair nucleotides can either be AT, CG, GC and TA. In a similar way, we have combinations for yellow and green fluorescence. Now let's understand the sequencing procedure. For sequencing of the unknown fragment, we use a primer which forms base pairing with the adapter. Then we allow the binding of probe. If the first two nucleotides form base pairing, then the probe binds. Once the probe binds, we use the DNA ligase enzyme to ligate the probe with the primer. The color of fluorescent signal is then detected by a digital camera and this information is saved. Then using an enzyme, the last three nucleotides are cleaved. As a result, the fluorescent probe is removed. In the next round, we again allow the binding of probe. If the first two nucleotide of the probe forms the base pairing, then the probe binds. Once the probe binds, the fluorescent signal is recorded and saved. Then the last three nucleotides are cleaved off and the fluorescent tag is removed. The cycle is again repeated. Once this is done and the information about the fluorescent signal is recorded, we repeat the whole process with N-1 primer. N-1 means 
this primer will have one nucleotide less as compared to the original primer. Once multiple ligation steps with N-1 primer is complete, we repeat the whole process with N-2 primer. Then with N-3 primer and finally with N-4 primer. Now here comes the important part. And this is related to decoding of the fluorescent signal that we have recorded. As we have discussed earlier, each fluorescent color will code for four possible combination of dinucleotide. So the question is out of four, which one is correct? Now please pay attention to this. The crux of this decoding lies in the fact that the last nucleotide of one will be the first nucleotide of other. And this overlapping information of nucleotide will help us to decode the correct nucleotide sequence of the sample. So let's try to decode the information. Since the primer is made complementary to the adapter, we know the sequence of primer. So in all the boxes shown above, the primer sequence can be directly written. Now each fluorescent color codes for four possible combination. If we analyze the recorded fluorescent signal, then the sequence is known this one is also known. The one over here is also known. And then we have this part where we have the information of the first nucleotide, but the second one is unknown. Now, if we see the coding of blue fluorescence, then if the first nucleotide is C, then the second nucleotide will also be C. And so the unknown nucleotide decoded will be C. So now let's write C in all the boxes. Now let's find this out. For green fluorescence, if the first nucleotide is C, then the second nucleotide has to be A. Now for the yellow fluorescence, if the first nucleotide is A, then the second nucleotide has to be G. For the green fluorescence, if the first nucleotide is G, then the second nucleotide has to be T. Next for the red fluorescence, if the first nucleotide is T, then the second nucleotide has to be A. Then for the blue fluorescence, if the first nucleotide is A, then the second nucleotide also has to be A. So as you can see, just by looking at the overlapping nucleotide of the previous fluorescent signal, the next nucleotide can be decoded. Okay, now let's say you're preparing for the exam or writing an assignment. In this case, you need to start explaining the full form. SOLID stands for Supported Oligonucleotide Ligation and Detection. Then start your answer by explaining the procedure. The sample to be sequenced is first amplified using emulsion PCR. And the beads of emulsion PCR are used for sequencing. Then explain about the probe. Next, explain the working and how sequencing is done. 
and finally explain how we read the fluorescent signal. In this, explain about the fluorescent probe. For example, blue fluorescence means A, A, C, C, G, G and T, T. Then you can explain about how the color of fluorescence is decoded using overlapping nucleotide sequence. To elaborate this, just make a simple ladder of random colors. The color to be used are blue, yellow, red and green. Now since the sequence of primer is known, we will have some information about the color and the nucleotide sequence. And finally, by analyzing the overlapping nucleotides, we decode the whole unknown sequence.